Claire Sims, reporter with Fox 5 News in Atlanta. Welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young debate series from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is the general election debate among candidates for lieutenant governor. Let's meet the candidates for this debate. They are in alphabetical order. Charlie Bailey, a Democrat who's an attorney and former senior assistant district attorney. Ryan Graham, a libertarian who works in software development. And Burt Jones, a Republican who serves as a Georgia state senator from District 25. Now let's take a moment to meet our panelists. Raul Valley is a politics reporter for WABE in Atlanta, and James Salzer is a state government reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. For complete rules on today's debate, please visit the Atlanta Press Club website at atlantapressclub.org slash debates. Now to start our debate, each candidate will be asked one question. Candidates have 60 seconds to answer each question. Raul, you get the first question to Ryan Graham. Mr. Graham, welcome to our debates. Um, the, the question I have for you is, James and I remember covering the Georgia legislature, being in the Georgia legislature in 2003, when Republicans took control and stripped a Democratic lieutenant governor of much of the power he had in the state Senate. If you are elected into a body that will most likely be a Republican body, how will you be able to operate? What will you be able to do as the lieutenant governor and the president of the Georgia State Senate? Yeah, Raul, thank you for the question, and thank you to the Atlanta Press Club for having me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's an interesting conundrum to be in, uh, knowing that the, the Senate would essentially strip the powers from the lieutenant governor if there was somebody who was not politically aligned with them. Um, but I still think that the position could be used as a bully pulpit to talk about the issues that are important to me, like educational freedom, uh, criminal justice reform, and election reform. And so, uh, you know, I, I still think that I can add a lot of value to that, um, to the position, and I can make sure that I can help sen senators from both sides of the aisle work together on the issues that I think are important um, by helping to be the bridge um, that you don't see in the Senate today. Thank you. All right, James, it's your turn to ask a question to Charlie Bailey. Mr. Bailey, uh, President uh, <clears throat> Biden recently announced that he would pardon those um, who have a federal simple possession of marijuana charge, has asked the federal health department to decriminalize the drug, and has asked states to follow suit. What is your stance on arresting char and charging people with possession of small amounts of marijuana? And when you were with the DA's office, did you prosecute people for that crime? So I am um, proud that President Joe Biden did what he did, took the steps to, um, to pardon those individuals. I'm for full legalization of uh, recreational marijuana use in small amounts. I think we've got to regulate it, we've got to tax it, but we've had a system for far too long that, um, that is unjust. Uh, and then it disproportionately affects poor communities and black and brown communities. Um, so I believe in legalization of, of marijuana. So certainly uh, I also agree with um, uh, pardoning those people that have been convicted of the possession of small amounts, uh, possession of small amounts of marijuana in our state. Um, we have to, this is an agricultural state. It's our number one industry. And we can use all the, the tools that we have as Georgians to have a, uh, a, a growing industry in the marijuana uh, industry. And that's my position. All right, Raul, your question for Burt Jones. Senator Jones, thanks for joining us for our debate. I wanted to ask you about your <clears throat> actions in December 2020 um, following the, the elections. And when you signed on to an electoral college slate, for then President Donald Trump, uh, even though Joe Biden had been certified the winner here in the state of Georgia, that slate could have been used in, in Washington. I want to ask you, why did you do that? And do you still believe those actions were appropriate? Well, thank you for the question. I appreciate you having me here today, Raul. Uh, you know, the fact is, we had court cases that were going on at the time, and it was a procedural move that we knew that we're not going to move forward if uh, if those court cases did not move forward. Uh, this had something that had been done in 1960 with the Kennedy-Nixon race uh, when they disputed over the state of Hawaii. You should look that up if you don't know about it. But, um, you know, as I travel around the state, uh, nobody's talking to me about 2020. Uh, what they are talking to me about is uh, gas prices, 40-year high inflation, uh, crime that's going on, and then education and what's going on in our education system. And that's what I've been focused on. That's what I was focused on in the primary, and that's what I've been focused on here in the general election as well. 
All right, thank you. That concludes the first round of our debate. The candidates will now ask a question to an opponent of their choice. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask their question, 60 seconds to respond, and then the candidate who asked the question will have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. By random selection, Charlie Bailey, you may ask the first question. Thank you. My question is to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, you served as a fake elector for Donald Trump. You, in secret, forged a fake electoral ballot. And not only that, you got on your daddy's plane the day before the insurrection, flew to Washington, D.C. with a letter in your pocket um, to urge the vice president not to count the electoral votes, all things that were aimed at overturning an election. So my question to you is, are you finally ready to take responsibility for your actions and apologize to the people of Georgia for those undemocratic actions? Well, here we are again, uh, a different race, but same accusations. I've got a, a opponent here uh, that uh, wants to attack my family, wants to attack me personally. Uh, and I think I just answered the question. Uh, that uh, Raul gave me. I think it's the same thing you just asked me there. But, uh, you know, that I, I'm wanting to talk about the issues that, uh, that are concerning Georgians right now. And uh, my opponent is uh, wanting to uh, talk about other things, everything except what's going on uh, with this 40-year inflation, which is a, a direct um, a reflection of the uh, Biden administration, which I know you endorse, and what's going on with the crime in the streets in our capital city, which I know you are you are for uh, allowing a no cash bail and and also uh, having DAs that don't prosecute uh, criminal activity. So uh, while most while Georgians I talk to every day are concerned about uh, how how the cost of living is going to be, uh, you you can continue to talk about 2018 and 2020 all you want. Okay, Mr. Bailey, you have 30 seconds. So what we heard there is someone that has continued not to take responsibility for his actions. And I didn't hear an apology to the people of Georgia for trying to throw out their millions of certified votes. You know, as a former prosecutor, I've seen this a number of times with people that have done something that's wrong. They want to talk about anything other than what they did. And the truth is, Mr. Jones, what you did was un-American and unpatriotic. You don't get to decide for the people of Georgia who, who serves them and who is their elected leaders. That's their choice, not yours. May I? We have to move on, but Senator Jones, it's your chance to have a question now. Okay. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to respond to that, but that's fine. I can ask, ask a question here. Uh, to, the question goes to Mr. Bailey. Uh, Charlie, you, you've made your whole campaign about being a prosecutor and being tough on crime and, and being somebody who's, uh, who, who, if elected, would be uh, a very uh, pro-law enforcement uh, person. But as your time as DA, as assistant DA in, in Fulton County, uh, you were suspended without pay back in 2017 for actions unbecoming of the office of DA. Would you like to explain to the voters what that what that uh, was that was so unbecoming for the office of Fulton County DAs? I'm proud of my time as a senior assistant uh, district attorney uh, in Fulton County. Um, I prosecuted hundreds of cases, uh, including cases uh, where folks were accused of crimes like murder and violent kidnapping and domestic abuse. Um, I'm not going to be lectured uh, by somebody that is currently under FBI investigation as we speak for multiple felonies. Uh, I've actually done the work as opposed to get in front of a camera and talking about um, keeping communities safe. I've actually done the work uh, with law enforcement uh, to keep communities safe and to get folks justice uh, that other folks think, you know, that they didn't matter. And that's why they were victims. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud of the work that I did. I'm proud of the people that I was able to work with. Um, and uh, and I, I appreciate the question, but I stand on my record. Mr. Jones, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, well, since he didn't answer the question, I can answer it for everybody. When he was assigned by Paul Howard, uh, his first criminal case, which is a gang-related case, uh, he decided to take a leave of absence and go on a golf trip. And uh, that's the difference uh, between uh, what you have here. You've got somebody who has ha got a record, like myself, of being a law and order person. That's why I'm, most sheriffs around the state endorse my candidacy for lieutenant governor and one who would rather go on vacation than try to, try to uh, go after uh, hardened criminals. Okay, Mr. Graham, you got 
the final question in this round for one of your opponents. Thank you. My question is for Burt Jones. Uh, on October 13th, you tweeted out that inflation is out of control, 401ks are being decimated, real wages are plummeting, and gas prices are through the roof. Now, all that's true, but then you went on to say Democrats are solely to blame. President Trump, even pre-pandemic, continued President Obama's policy of printing new money to pay for bloated budgets, contributing heavily to the inflation levels we're now seeing. How could you possibly help resolve the issue if you're unwilling to concede even partial responsibility in the contributions by Republicans to the current crisis being felt by all Georgians? Look, there's no question that if, in Washington, D.C., it, it's, it's broken and, uh, and you have out of control spending done by both Republicans and Democrats. But what we have to do is focus on what we can control here in the state of Georgia. That's why I, I led the charge on eliminating the gas tax, uh, you know, to give people a relief at the pump. Uh, these last six or seven months we've had. That's also why I've been pushing for us to eliminate our state income tax, which is something that will help all Georgians, putting money back into the pockets of hardworking Georgians, small businesses, families, and things of that nature. And, uh, and I'm committed to do, continue to do everything we can uh, to curb the cost of Georgians because I think uh, our money, they're, 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 the money is better used in their pockets than it is in state or federal government. Mr. Graham, well, your thank rebuttal. Thank you for the question. Yeah. The um, suspension of the gas tax is great. Um, I, I, would, I would argue that elimination would be even better, um, like you said, actually. President Trump continued President Obama's policy of increasing the money supply to pay for ever-increasing budgets. By the end of his one term in office, $6.7 trillion was added to the national debt. President Trump criticized our own Governor Kemp for reopening our economy, uh, our economy too early during the pandemic. Georgia should have never been shut down in the first place. And President Trump implemented protectionist tariffs that increase prices for all Americans. President Biden has continued them. The truth is, this inflation has been bipartisan. Thank you. That concludes our second round. For those of you just joining us, this is the general election debate between candidates for lieutenant governor. We will now go back to our panelists to ask questions to the candidate of their choice until we run out of time. Now, as a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask questions of the candidates, and I will determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. James, you get the first question in this round. I'd like to ask Mr. Graham, uh, you mentioned that you'd like to eliminate the uh, gas tax in the state. And I've heard uh, libertarian candidates also talk about eliminating various other taxes. If you do that, how, what, do you, what do you think should be eliminated from the state budget to make up for the fact that we would not have the revenue that under, under <clears throat> your so Libertarians believe in a culture of consent, uh, and that goes for all things. So if value is being added for something, we believe that people will pay for it, just like you do every, every other thing. So you wanna buy you know, your milk and bread at the store, that's value added, you pay for it, right? So we don't believe that you have to take money from people in the form of taxes to pay for the goods and services that are provided by government today. Um, and I don't think anything needs to, um, I, I think you, you can cut things from the budget um, and that doesn't necessarily cut those services from society. We just need to find better ways to pay for it in a, a consensual manner. How would, you pay, how would you pay for public schools, for instance, if you eliminated the funding for that goes towards public schools? There's incredible demand for public schools, right? Everybody wants their kid to be educated. There's no reason to believe that the, another system besides taking money from people um, via property taxes usually uh, would, be, would, would not be feasible. So, you know, I want to send my kid to school. I, I would pay for it. Instead of paying for property taxes, I would pay for the school directly. Raul, it's your turn. Question for Charlie Bailey. Uh, Mr. Bailey, um, one of the things based on how many people get elected um, to the legislature is the possibility of putting gambling on the statewide ballot for voters to decide. Two questions for you. What forms of gambling would you, if you support it, what forms of gambling would you put on the ballot and what, what, where should that money go? Well, I support uh, legalizing um, casino gambling, uh, legalizing uh, sports betting, as well as uh, paramutual horse, uh, horse betting gambling. And, and these are things that uh, folks in Georgia are already doing. Um, and it's the, the people of Georgia, though, are not getting any tax revenues that can go into our schools to help pay our teachers more, to help reduce class sizes, uh, to restore hope. Uh, to, uh, you know, to do all the things that we need to do to make our education system a 21st century education system. So I support legalizing um, all those forms that I, that I mentioned. 
um, and uh, the people of Georgia do as well. And with that money, we can finally invest and not just have words about caring about education, but have the deeds behind it so that our kids can have the best opportunities uh, they can coming out of high school to pr preserve, uh, to, to pursue the kind of life that they want to pursue. One quick follow up. Would you want it to be on the ballot how the money is spent, or would you want the legislature to decide how the money is spent? Well, I think we can talk about that. Um, you know, uh, but I, I don't, you know, I, the people have been clear, the people of Georgia are clear where they stand on these issues. Um, and I think education, in particular, restoring hope, make, making technical school tuition free, um, making it so that we actually have universal pre K. Um, and uh, paying our teachers more and reducing class sizes is where that money needs to go. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Senator Jones, one of your top issues on your website is election integrity. And it specifically says on your website that you played an integral role in the passage of the Election Integrity Act, also known as Senate Bill 202. Sure. But you were not one of the 23 Republican co-sponsors of that legislation. Can you explain what was your role in getting that legislation through the General Assembly? Well, number one, I voted for it and I supported it. Uh, there was uh, almost 80 so odd election bills that came through in the 2021 uh, session. So uh, some of them I was uh, signed on to, some of them, you know, wasn't made available for me to sign on to. But I supported the 202 bill and I think it's, it's come to, uh, we've come to realize that it's actually uh, working, you know, back uh, this past Instead of, uh, well, as people thought it was going to restrict voting, uh, this past primary in 22, we had record turnout in the primary. We have three weeks of early voting. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we have a situation where we have weekend votes. And uh, while it was not perfect, no piece of legislation is, I think you're seeing right now that it is uh, made it uh, easier to vote and harder to cheat. Okay, thank you. James. Senator Jones, uh, last time you were here, you said you supported a total ban on abortion with no exceptions. Uh, since then, your campaign has indicated that you support some exemptions. What, what, what are those instances where you would, you would be okay with that? Well, I mean, it, it's, it goes to the bill we passed in 2019. This is, this is a very emotional uh, issue, and, and I feel for those who have to, uh, those mothers who have to face a situation where they're having to make decisions and having to uh, look at what their future might look like. But in 2019, we passed a bill uh, that did have exemptions. Uh, it was in the case of rape, in the case of incest, and the well-being of a mother. And, uh, and so I, I, I'm, I supported that bill then. And moving forward, I think what we need to focus on is, is making sure that we have critical access facilities, health facilities for women who are faced with those decisions uh, to be able to utilize, as well as shore up our foster care system, and, and also making adoption a lot easier than what it is currently here in the state of Georgia. So those are the things I wanna be focused would on. You, would you um, support any changes next year no, I think I think what we have is is uh, you know you pass it in 2019, and uh, and I'm I'm good with uh, you know I'm I'm good with the you know us moving forward and, and working on those things like I talked about having the exceptions in there and working on the foster care system as well as access to critical health facilities and and adoption as well. This is a very important issue, so I'd like to give Mr. Bailey and Mr. Graham a chance to weigh in on the heartbeat bill as well. Mr. Bailey, would you like to go first? Well, uh, I believe that the six-week abortion ban uh, that has been passed uh, is an infringement on um, the women of Georgia and their right to make their own health care decisions. And I think it's absolutely outrageous uh, that Mr. Jones has stated um, publicly that he's not even for exceptions uh, for the victims of rape, for the victims of incest, for women whose lives are in danger. Uh, I support codifying the protections of Roe v. Wade in our state law under our state right to privacy. If the Supreme Court is going to be derelict in its duty to protect the constitutional rights of the women of Georgia and treat them as equal human beings deserving of, of dignity in their own choice, then we will stand in the breach. And, and if I'm lucky enough to become lieutenant governor, I will fight until we have those protections in our state law for the women of Georgia. Mr. Graham. Yeah. I believe in the sovereignty of women over their own bodies, and I don't think that politicians should have control over their bodies. Um, and so first and foremost, I don't think there should be laws around abortion at all uh, regarding that. Um, 
the, what I do believe is, so prohibition doesn't work, right? There are moral issues with abortion that need to be resolved, but prohibition doesn't work. And what you end up doing when you put it in the dark is you make it unsafe um, and you, you don't stop it from happening anyway. The data shows that, um, that shows that. So what you want to do is make sure that it is legal, that it is safe, um, and that you're not infringing on the rights of women and that you're offering other opportunities besides abortion. So you want to have increased access to contraceptives. You want to have um, over-the-counter birth control. You want to have better education about contracepti contraceptives. Um, and all of those things help resolve the issue of abortion way better than prohibition and control over women's bodies. Okay, thank you all. We have time for one more question, Raul. Then I'll make it a, a try to make it a lightning quick question. Uh, it's in reference to a previous debate, the insurance commissioner's debate. A quick yes or no and maybe a quick sentence. Would you, through the legislature, give the Georgia Insurance Commissioner more power over auto insurance rates up to the approval power of auto insurance rates? We can start with Charlie Bailey and just go right down the line. A quick yes or no and a sentence. Well, uh, I would, and they need to use that, that power to reduce the car insurance rates, which are some of the highest in the entire country. Mr. Graham? Uh, no, central planning doesn't work. It increases costs elsewhere, um, and we really need to get rid of the, uh, what I call czars in Georgia anyway. Senator Jones? Yeah, I would be careful about allowing a, an agency to have the ability just to raise prices. So I would, uh, I would, I would want to look at that through the legislative process. All right, that was quick. Great job, guys. <laughs> that is all the time we have now for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Bert Jones, you get the first closing statement. Well, thank you, and I appreciate Atlanta Press Club for uh, having us here today. I just want to um, uh, thank everyone and for uh, it's being on the campaign trail and, and all the support that we've received since uh, we started this over a year ago. I, look, I'm Burt Jones. I'm a father, a husband, a small business owner, and a state legislator. I have a sixth-generation Georgian. I love the state of Georgia, and I believe that the state of Georgia uh, has a bright future ahead of it. We've been the number one state to do business in for nine straight years, and it's been because of good, strong, conservative leadership that we've had. I've been in the private sector and I've been in the legislature and I know what works and what does not work. I know what the slight to sign the front part of, front of a check as opposed to the back. And I know what Georgians are going through right now with the economy, inflation and everything else, crime in the streets. That's why as your next lieutenant governor, my main focus is about putting resources back in your pocket. That's why I'm for eliminating our state income tax. That's why I'm for being with our men and women in law enforcement, as well as creating a world-class K-12 through education system. We can do it together, and with your help on November 8, we'll make it happen. Burt Jones for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie Bailey, it's your turn. My name is Charlie Bailey. I'm an eighth-generation Georgian, a seventh-generation Harris Countyan. I'm an attorney and a former prosecutor, and I've spent my career fighting to get people justice. And I'm running for lieutenant governor because every day the vast majority of Georgians, they get up and they go to work and they're worried about, is my kids safe? How are they doing in school? If I get a hospital bill, can I pay it? And instead of working on those issues that are the closest to the hearts and the everyday lives of the people of Georgia, uh, my opponent, Burt Jones, in this race has been engaged in a politics of extremism and division. It is a politics that stands against the values that I grew up on, which are Georgia values, and they are very simply that we are all human beings, that we all love our families, and we all deserve the same dignity, the same safety, the same justice, the same opportunity to leave for our kids a better life than the one that we had. Those are the values that have driven my life, that have driven my career, and will drive me every single day if I'm lucky enough to become your lieutenant governor. My name is Charlie Bailey, and I'd be honored to earn your vote. Ryan Graham, you get the final closing statement. Thank you, Atlanta Press Club, for hosting this debate and for giving Georgians a chance to hear from all the choices for lieutenant governor. I'm polling as high as nearly 8% in multiple polls now. That number means that more people are dissatisfied with politics as usual. It also means we're insured a runoff. The only question is, who will be in it? The spoiler effect is gone. It's already clear that neither of my opponents have secured the 50% required to win. So with that, you can feel free to vote your conscience on November 8th. Vote for the person who most represents your values. Vote to send a message to Republicans and Democrats alike that we are done with their political games. If it comes to it, you can vote for the lesser of two evils in December. You can find out more about my campaign at Graham4GA.com, and I ask you to vote Ryan Graham for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you. 
That concludes our debate. We would like to remind voters that Election Day is on Tuesday, November 8th, and early voting is already underway. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists, Raul and James. Thank you both. And thank you to the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. For more information about the debates they will host this election season, you can visit atlantapressclub.org slash debates. I'm Claire Sims. Thanks for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series.